Welcome to Outlaw Woodworking. Today we, we uh, basically continue working on the garage. We're installing a French drain and right here you can see I've got filter fabric on the bottom. I got about six inches of gravel on the filter fabric. Then I placed the uh, French drain on top of that six inches of gravel and then I put six more inches of gravel on top of the drain and then cover it with filter fabric. So right here you can see um, some of the areas I had to actually do by hand, I couldn't twist my tool cat around to dump it in there, which was a little bit of a pain, but I did get it done. Anyway, right here I'm shoveling in and getting more gravel. I've got the French drain running all the way down this little side right here. And this will be about, there'll be about four more feet of dirt on it. Or actually, no, two, two more feet in there. And right here you can see I'm placing more gravel. I kind of used this bucket to tell me where I was at with the with the, the dumping it in there. Sometimes if you have a narrow trench you can use this four foot wide filter fabric and basically um, put, the gra put the fabric down, put the gravel down, put your pipe on, put more gravel down and then you could fold the filter fabric over. But in my case it didn't work out that good so I had to put another piece of filter fabric on top of this. So I've got this French drain running all the way around the bottom of my footing on this garage. And basically I'm going to put a T in here in this corner section, tie them both together and run one pipe out, out and down. And that should give good protection for this foundation. Plus I'm going to waterproof it also with some, uh, I'm going to waterproof the, these stem walls on the outside with some stuff that I, someone recommended. There's a shot with the drone. There's a shot with the GoPro. The Toolcat has really been a workhorse around my property. The ability to switch from buckets to forks to uh, the snow plow, it's been a really, really good tool. Right here is where I had to do a lot by hand because I couldn't twist my Toolcat. I didn't have enough room on this side of the garage to twist it sideways. And here you can see I don't have enough filter fabric to fold it over also. So I'll have to put a whole new piece on top. It was pretty stormy out so I, I decided to shoot the drone up there and see if I could catch any lightning with my camera. But I wasn't able to catch any lightning. But it is a cool, cool picture from up there. The next day I get right back at it and this is when I, I started on the waterproofing. And what I did here was I snapped a line, the slope of the grade that I'm going to have. And this is going to slope from front to back. And it's going to slope about two feet in, in uh, what is it, 34 feet. I'm going to slope it about two feet in 34 feet. That should get the water running off really nice away from the garage. I'll slope it away from the garage and then also to the back of the garage. And I'm basically when I do the grading, I'll follow this waterproofing mark. And um, yeah. Now if I had it to do over again, I would do the waterproofing before I put the, the gravel in because this, this waterproofing is really thick and every time I I went, I would uh, go down close to the rock, it would pick up a rock on the paintbrush and on the roller and it, that was a pain. So if I had it to do over again, I'd definitely do this waterproofing before the gravel. But it is all the way down to the bottom of the footing, which is, or I mean the top of the footing, so it should, should do some extra protection. This stuff is okay, but there is there is better products. I've used I've used quite a few. If it was a basement, 
I would probably not use this. I would use a different product. Um, I like the I like the rubber membranes better for a, if you have a living quarters underneath. They're um, much more durable. But this is what I have right now for this, and it should be should be plenty good. It goes on brown and then it dries black. And it's pretty rubbery. I actually ended up going back and I put two coats on. The next day I added and went and filled in any bad spots and got down lower. And this is going to be the slope on this side also. I'm going to slope right along this line. One of the challenges with how I placed this garage will be getting all the water to go away from it. On this back side it'll be easy, but on I have a side up above there you can see that hill right there and that spot I'm gonna really have to hog out some of that area, maybe put a retaining wall. Uh, I'm thinking about building actually a retaining wall with another French drain behind it out of these big boulders that I've been pulling out of this property. One thing I like to always do is do a tool review, and people always ask for that. This is a Bosch rotor hammer that I've had for like 10 years. It's a big rotor hammer, and today I'm going to demonstrate how to drill a dry hole. I have to drill two holes through this 8-inch footing. One of them is going to be for the water service, and the other one's going to be for a sewer for a future bathroom. And um, this Bosch rotor hammer. I'm using the Honda generator to run it. And this is a four inch dry hole saw bit made by Bosch. And Bosch is a German company and, and it's made in Germany actually. And here you can see I'm demonstrating. I made sure to measure where my rebar was, not to hit any rebar. And basically you can go about three inches deep pull it out, pull out your plug, and then go again. You do have to keep it, hold on to it really, it will, it will spin around and, you know, give you a good knock. It does have a lot of power. Right here you can see I take out that little piece and then continue on. It took about three pieces to go through here. Here's another view from the top. It has a speed control on it. I'll list the model number of this. Bosch makes really good rotor hammers. I have a smaller one too, and um, they it it's just worked. I've never had any problems with it. And this one, I drilled basically two four-inch holes. I let it rest between between drilling, it, it gets a little hot drilling, drilling this far through a big wall. And here you can see it coming through there on the bottom of the screen. And there's my hole. Here you can see a picture of the hole. Yeah, I let it rest for a little while and then I started to drill this other hole. Now this hole is gonna be the, for the water service and I'm actually sleeving this water service in a Schedule 40 PVC pipe. The reason being is I'm about four feet deep right here and if I and I want to make sure that it doesn't have any frost problems so I basically sleeve this section. Usually the where I'm at five feet is about four or five feet is the recommended depth to keep keep your water from freezing up. And if you put it in a sleeve, then you get some added, added depth out of it. Now what I'm going to do is, when I put these sleeves in, I'm actually going to use a product called Water Plug that we use on septic tanks and stuff, and I'm going to seal around it on both sides before I backfill. But you can see this Bosch rotor hammer 
has no problem running a dry bit right through this 8 inch wall. Pretty impressive. I'd highly recommend this drill, especially if you have to do any big work. And it, all, it also it works as a drill or a roto uh, or a jackhammer. So it's good for small things. And that's my demonstration of the Bosch jackhammer roto drill combo. The only disappointment is the case. The case did break after a while. I think it got brittle and you know from being out in the sun it's probably not a UV rated case. Um, otherwise it's a great tool. And here you can see the sleeve that I'm going to use for that water service. Next up was to start backfilling and compacting and that's a job in itself. Here you can see what I'm going to do right here is actually I'm going to build a bridge so I could drive my excavator into that garage and start grading on the inside. And here I was, I was, uh, it's funny, I saw this deer just sleeping up here. So I set my camera up here and I, um, I, I just left it filming and walked away. Anyway, this guy seemed to be pretty happy in this spot. I put water out for these deer pretty much every day, and when it's hot, you, they drink they drink a lot. They seem to like it up here on my mountain. There's, they seem to be really healthy, and um, yeah, they're nice looking deer. Anyway, thank you very much for watching. Hope you enjoyed this video. Just a little progress on the garage. And I will see you next time. Please subscribe, like the video. Later.